Hey everybody, so we had a lot of interest, or it seemed like it anyway, in that little demo I gave of using the spline to generate this cool little fence. Could be anything at all, but in my case I created a bunch of fun props in PolySketch and thought you might want to see how I created those and also how I set up the spline, including things like how uh, to use the super duper cool uh, new spline components. In this case I'm using Instantiate and all their nice little randomization effects, like here I can really easily set how exactly those arrows are being laid out and the rotation, etc. All that on these. So I'll go through and pretty much walk through all the steps, including building the parts for this in PolySketch. Hope you enjoy that. It's a neat little tool for building simple low poly prototypey meshes and then bringing it into Unity, setting up the whole spline business here. So sounds good, I hope. See you over there in, in PolySketch to start. Okay, so starting with the rocks, I've actually built most of them here, but I'll just uh, show you one of the, the easier ones or better ones I think I did. I usually start sort of drawing out the base, extruding it upward, and then kind of go around and just real organically cut in chunks and add little uh, sections. So I'll use just that regular draw tool, sketching, and it's really the only tool in the app, I guess. Um, so you're sketching all these little chunks, kind of move things around real quick and easy. I'll probably say this too much during the recording, but this is what I what I really enjoy and love about using the app is that just uh, in, in VR, you can reach in and just grab and move things around or draw these little lines in and connect things up. Uh, there's no need to think about the whole mess like you would with a mouse keyboard and coordinate axis and whatnot. So anyway, just um, rocks. Rocks are more difficult than you might imagine, but kind of go in there and, and keep cutting till you feel like you've got like the faces and facets ready. I find it really helps to look at some reference images first. Um, we need a way to make those visible in the app. Uh, anyway, keep doing that, work at it. As you can see here, I'm just kind of jumping around and adding pieces on and off uh, until I feel like it's ready and this looks pretty good. So I will, well, I guess tweak a few more bits and make sure it matches the others. Yay, it's good plop it over next to the rest, make sure it kind of fits, and then we can move on to the next. So next I'll work on the spikes. Got to pick a different color for that, of course. And again, start with just a basic start, not really the profile, but the bottom of it, extrude it upward, kind of shrink and keep going. I really enjoy the messiness of this. Uh, as someone who actually did a lot of my early work in a, like, TF2 mapping and things where it's heavily grid based. This was hard for me to get used to at first, but um, eventually I just decided I really liked it. Uh, a bit of indecision there. Or I can see here as I'm recording over my video later, I guess I didn't really know how to make that sharp bit at first or how sharp I wanted it to be. Um, but yeah, then just take that, uh, select it, copy it around, kind of form that that tripod that will be the the uh, shape here. And it's just it's so easy to just grab and move things around. You're looking at it in real 3D space. Uh, real nice to set it up. Maybe tweak some of these just a bit so they don't look all exactly the same. That's pretty important. Well, it's important-ish anyway. And make sure it's all looking good. Maybe give some more sections by kind of pulling up and re-extruding, moving chunks around. Again, keeping it real kind of messy and chunky. That's at least the style that I tend to like and works really well with this particular app at least. Then I'll add in the rope that's going around and this, um, just to preface it or whatnot, uh, it's kind of a mess right now. We do have a tool actually already prototyped and built. We just gotta get it into the real app that lets you just draw uh, nice and easy lines and then kind of set the width of the extrusion around them. And that would make this much, much easier for now. I'm just going to keep pulling this face like as an extrusion and pop it around, around, and around, and, and wrap it to build this. I won't show you the whole process. It's pretty messy. Uh, but there, looks good. Looks vaguely like a rope and is pretty low poly, so that's good. Uh, lastly, I'll create the arrow. No need to create a new one. I'll just pull over one of those stakes to start and use that and draw in the arrow head. Uh, kind of clinking pieces or parts together to make a, a nice low poly simple arrowhead here. And once it's ready, just kind of set it up as it looks pretty good in there. And this uh, probably needs to be a bit longer. I can just grab a point, pull it out. Again, I'm not worried about snapping or being precise. Uh, again, it's a style I'm looking. At, I'm looking for. There are snapping tools, but we don't. Or at least I'm not. I'm not using them here. Uh, try and time to draw in the fletchings, the feathers on the arrow make it a nice interesting bright red color that'll help it stick out also just sketch that in and drop the last point 
you get a nice simple thing like that and I'll tweak this around you can see I'm having a bit of trouble here and there because precision stuff is a little a little tricky at the moment we're working on that too anyway take that um, build it out add the other one here I try to always make each one just a little bit different it is really easy to duplicate chunks if you want but better to build on its own and if perspective is getting difficult just grab all the stuff move it around and start drawing I guess I could have made the perspective a little easier on myself there uh, I'll draw on the last one and that looks pretty good make sure I'll get it set up and shrunk down to the right size and then I should be ready to export to export things just select all the parts in the object open the menu and click on export pretty straightforward and continue to do that for each one. You could also do the entire scene at once, but we really want these separate, so I'll keep selecting each one, doing export, and then I'll just jump over to Unity. You don't need to watch all these, so we'll see you over there. All right, so we're back in Unity here. We're gonna bring in the files to go into your quest, internal storage, dive into the PolySketch folder, and then exports. And you can grab everything there. It's both OBJ and material files. One thing, if you try to drag it directly into Unity for some reason it doesn't work from the Quest headset directly so you'll want to open your folder whatever it is up in your file explorer dig into into that and then drag drop uh, from file explorer to flat file explorer and that for some reason that works fine um, okay so once you've got that ready you'll now have that folder with everything and we got to do a little bit of setup but first yep you can just drag them in and check so the blue items are those OBJs um, and we'll need to convert those so we're gonna select each and every one of them not really convert but we need to create a prefab variant for each to have a little more control over them right click and go to create and then prefab variant not prefab variant itself there's a difference in this case different tutorial and that's just a good idea always to do whenever you're working with imported meshes just to um, just to have a bit more control and make sure you can always uh, get back to the original if you need to later. Anyway, there's the variant. looks exactly the same as the OBJ, but that's going to allow us to get started here. So first thing I'll do is create just a ground plane so I have something I can see a little better and drop that in. Kind of hard to see, and I've also named it this F by accident as I do everything because I create it then hit F to focus, but that renames it. Um, anyway, Name it properly and then also create a material so you can get something a little better on here and name that to match. I try to keep up with my naming as best as possible once you once you start losing track. It's just a downhill slope. Uh, anyway, once we have that, I'll go ahead and set the, the color on the material. Uh, you might notice I'm using or trying to use a new uh, different way of managing my windows with these floating panels so I'm kind of fumbling as I try to remember my shortcuts and stuff here uh, alright anyway we've got our, our plane now let's create a spline so game object create spline you can just click to hit points or click and drag to create these bezier points once you have something that's pretty good you can then just hit enter and start click and drag on points to move them around or use regular drag select and the handles if you prefer that whatever works for you uh, and then as soon as you have something ready we can go ahead and open up the inspector on that spline and get to work on it so first thing we do is click add component and go down to spline instantiate that's going to instantiate items on it and there's a list down here where it says items to instantiate and what you want to do ignore a little jump i made some mistakes um, so you want to set that number to eight in our case in the case here since i have eight objects not including the arrow and then start drag and dropping them one by one that should really be easier um, <laughs> we'll see what we can do about that maybe anyway dropping them each in uh, except for number nine that's gonna be the arrow this one here but we don't wanna uh, we're gonna use uh, do something a little different with that so with this we need to set them each to 100 percent that should also be easier again another thing to see what's going on there maybe just a bug in the version I have here Good point to notice I'm using 2.x. Make sure you're using that to get all this good stuff here. Okay, so I've got all my items added in. Sorry, that's splines 2.x I meant to say, 2.0 and up. Uh, so I now want to add a second instantiate, and this is going to be used for the arrows because I want to do it a little bit differently. So just one item needs to be here. You can try and pick it from the select menu, but at least in my case, I've got too much stuff and it's all named pretty terribly. Uh, plus different ones in different folders, so who knows, I won't do it that way. 
I will try to remember my shortcuts, not that one. That one goes to the project. Grab number nine and drop it in there. And now I have the arrow ready to go. So I can uh, use a position offset on this just so actually to take a little better look in here, you can see it's being spawned right exactly on the line, but I actually want this. So I want to offset it on the X axis and I can drag this around to get a pretty good idea of what I want. But exact isn't good enough. I probably want that to be random. So it's going to be back and forth along the line. And so I can set that to be something like this is as close as I think the arrows should get to it. And that would be about the max distance that they're at. And maybe I want a few of the arrows to have passed over the line, something to that effect. I won't get too exact here. This is all more for you to have fun with than you when you try it out later. That's pretty good. And I'll also set a rotation on it. So these arrows should be kind of looking like they went down into the ground at an angle. I just made a hand gesture that didn't that didn't help. Um, but again, the easiest way is kind of to just click and drag on, on the item here and see what it does. So the X axis isn't really what I want. The Y axis is just spinning it around. Not what I want. Could probably do a random on that just for fun later, but who cares? This is the one that I want, I can see. So that makes it look like the arrow came in at an angle. And by messing with that number, I can get a good idea of what sort of the maximum I want it to be, maximum and minimum. And then I can use that, so very visually checking, to then set the random. So if I drag it back up, I can see eh, right about negative 20 is the, the highest angle and negative 60 to be the lowest. So I can change that to random, set in right about negative 18, and then a rounder number here will just make me happier. Maybe a little more angle at, at negative 70. Looks like it reset my uh, the two value, but oh well for this for this tutorial it doesn't matter. Um, okay, so back to all the other objects. Looking at these, let's pick a few things we can work on here. Again, most of it you'll just kind of want to mess around and try it yourself. Um, I can change the distance between. In this case, uh, dragging on that didn't didn't do so great. So I happen to know from doing this about six times while recording that 0.42 ish is pretty nice. Uh, let's see what I settle on. 0.46 it looks like. That's the winner. So that's that's pretty good. Uh, I lied. I'm still going to add it to some more. 0.5. I think I just can't stand having multiple numbers. Okay. Uh, or digits. Uh, so we'll maybe add a bit of a position offset to this. So I don't want them all at once. I'd rather do something random. So they're kind of scattered back and forth in the line a little bit. And once again, I think I just had a little bit of trouble figuring out the exact right number here. There's a uh, there's a good bit I could edit out of this, but it's it's getting it's getting pretty close to midnight, so I'm not gonna um, be a little bit rambly. Anyway, this is all stuff that you just kind of want to mess with. So all these numbers, anywhere from any of the random or exact amounts, um, and position, rotation, scale. There's a whole lot of fun stuff you can mess with. If you find you don't like what you're getting, you can always um, hit randomize. <laughs> not I clicked regenerate about six times there. You want to just randomize it and that'll get you a different result. You can keep clicking as many times as you want uh, until you have something that you like. Um, maybe add some rotation offsets. Uh, while I watch myself work, this is a good time to mention all of this stuff can be modified in game as well. So it's just a regular component. If you wanted to have it randomly spawn and generate and, and randomize all that good stuff in game, you definitely can. Okay, so that is it for this quick look at the spline. One thing I wanted to note is while you have it selected, you can get all these crazy gizmos on it if you want that. And those can be toggled with the gizmos menu. It might help you while you're setting up the, the randomizations, especially on rotation. It'll help you a bit more. So um, you can see it really nicely updates as you modify the spline itself. And you can keep adding more instantiate components if you have more custom stuff to add or keep working on the, the ones you already have and get something pretty nice looking right away. So I hope everyone enjoyed this. I had a lot of fun making it. And I guess we'll see you in the next one. Let us know how you... How do you like using this?